All right, so are you looking to get into 3D printing and just wanted to grab a machine that will just work itself without you having to learn a lot of stuff in order to make it work? If that's the case, then the Bamboo One A1 Mini is probably going to be your best bet. And instead of giving you a all kinds of flip and flop advertisement, let's actually go down to the earth and do the practical. I will just be doing a complete unboxing to the initial setup and then we are going to be doing our first PLA print and then a more challenging part which is going to be TPU prints. So you can just go into my shoes and see it firsthand of how things are going to be working if you are a complete beginner. So yep, just consider this as a complete setup guide. By the record, I did actually purchase this machine myself. So yep, let's get right into it. Before I begin, if you can, please help me like and subscribe as this is going to keep my content flowing. Thank you. All right, so let's actually just look at what's actually in the box. This is probably the biggest stuff that I have unboxed for a while. All right, so in the box, you can see that most of the stuff, it's already assembled. So that's why the package was so big. Yeah, so the good thing about the machine coming as pre-installed is that yeah i don't think there's a lot of stuff that you need to just figure it out yourself which is a very good thing as a beginner so you know and this is probably why i'm selecting this because i've heard so much good stories about bamboo labs generating printers that you know just making super beginner friendly stuff which is a big plus All right so that was a lot of film you can see that we even have more right here Okay, so I think we need to probably cut this off. This package is just crazy. Just how much foam is in here? It took me about five minutes to remove everything. Okay, put this off. Take that off. Okay, great. All right, so we're gonna cut off this wire. This is a tight. Okay, throw that away. So after removing a package, you should be getting a quick start guide. I think this is going to be essential if you just wanted to start it quickly. And quite surprising, they're actually giving us stickers and they actually look pretty nice. So, you know, this kind of just gives you a premium type of feel. And yeah, you know, FPV drones has a lot of stickers and Bamboo Labs also have a lot of stickers. Interesting. You will get like a little roll of like PLA basics. So you can just probably start up and give it testing. And this one, I believe it's going to be the feeding tube that we can just use to install that. A safety guideline. I don't know if anybody's actually going to be reading this. The only two loose parts that you will be getting in this printer is going to be this kind of like filament holder. And also this one is called, I think it's called a perch kind of wiper or something. I don't know what it's for, but we'll find out. Lastly, you are just going to be getting a box of accessories. So these are just going to be, yeah, all the stuff you need to maintain the printer for. I just don't know the use yet, but... I think there are going to be some screws or whatsoever that we need to use to install these stuff onto it. So we'll find out in the installation process. Le All right, so let's start by getting this film and holder installed. We're just going to be following the manual. So the first step, we're basically going to be required to remove this kind of like Z-axis holders. So basically, you're just going to be turning your printer to the side and you're going to remove these four screws. You're supposed to take this thing off. So yep, this is just a plate that's meant for the shipping purpose, I believe. All right, so the next step, we should be tightening the three screw in the green lock and head. So basically under the bill plate, just to give you like a better view, these are gonna be the screws that you have to tighten. The next step, we're just gonna be installing the purge wiper. All right, so it's actually pretty simple. I think there's only one side that you can line this up. All right, next you are required to bring out this longer screw. It's going to be the M312. You're not going to be missing it because it actually labels properly. All right. So, yep. Basically, just kind of screw it in here. All right. Done. All right, so, the next step, installing the spool holder base. So, it should be a pretty simple job. Yep, just use the original screws where we're removing the Z-axis holder. Next, bring out the spool holder itself. And I think we just have to slide it in and that's it. Yep, here we go. It's gonna take some pressure. All right, done. Next step, we're just gonna be installing the tubing. This side should be pretty simple. Just press it in. As for the printer side, I think we can just install in this one based on the instruction. I have done right now. If you have a better cable management, you can bring out this little dongle thing that come with the package. 
All right, so something important is that there is going to be a different size of this kind of dongle. Just make sure that your black cable, which is the data cable, is actually going to this one so it doesn't drop off. The rest of the ones, you can just arrange whatever you like. Okay, and clip it in like that. Perfect. Next, we're just going to be feeding the filament into the printer, and we're just going to be using the one that actually came with it. So based on my understanding, what we have to do is just kind of like start pushing it in from this direction. So you just have to kind of like make it stuck a little bit. So I think this should be sufficient. We'll try. All right, so next we can just start power this thing on since all the settings are done. Yeah, I'll leave the power button fighting for you. So let's kind of do this film. Is it better? No, it's not. All right, so I guess we just start hitting start. So we can select English. We are in where? North America. All right, select Wi Fi. I'll leave this to you to kind of do it yourself. I guess we have to log into this account, but that's going to be something that we'll be doing later. I think you can set it up yourself. Agree. Sub documents. Yes. Screw screws. Done. No noise cancellation. Okay. Let's just start calibrating. All right, so the printer is just going to be starting to do some calibration by itself. We can just leave it and let it do its job. It's kind of like an automated experience, and there's nothing you have to do with this. 70 years later. All right, so the calibration is now completed. Yep, it took about a about good 20 minutes, so just make sure you have this kind of time because you cannot move it whatsoever. So 20 minutes, kind of long. Now we can start actually printing files, but I'm not really sure about how good my printer is going to print on this table because you can see that it actually rocks pretty bad but we're just going to be testing it just to kind of see if it actually works we're going to be printing the banshee All right so i think we can just hit the banshee right here oh huh, interesting there's lots of options I feel like there are some like useful tools already in here so that's actually a pretty good thing speedboat rack bamboo pla it's a time lapse. In the middle of the traditional time lapse might lead to the effect. Okay, so we're just not going to use it. Okay, print, print, print. Come on. Let me just make sure that the filament is actually in there. Yep, it's actually in there. Print. Ooh, I like the sound. All right, so because my tables was shaking so bad, so I have to remove the machine and just put it on the floor. And yeah, you can see that the print of the time lapse. Basically, printing a banshee is not going to be a problem at all. Yep, you can see that the banshee is actually coming out pretty good, but printing a banshee doesn't mean anything because yeah, these are just going to be optimized files set up for the printer anyway. So, so what we are going to be doing next is we're actually going to be finding something on a random file and see how the printer actually performs to see if it can actually be kind of like all hands off that sort of thing all right so here are going to be the pla parts that i was able to print out without having to adjust anything by default you can see they actually came out pretty good so why is there no video is because i forgot to press record on the time lapse so you know i just don't wanted to do it again so right now you know that pla is generally not going to be an issue at all but the more challenging is we're going to jump up to another level which is going to be tpu tpu is something that i use a lot in the fpv drone hobby or even rc cars and it's going to help a lot if we're actually be able to print this. So, so we're actually going to be printing out this DJI Nano camera casing from this maker. So, so if you wanted to print this file, I would suggest donate to this person just to thank him to give us the file so we can print it ourselves. All right, as you can see right here, this is going to be the final result. And yep, it wasn't as good. We have a lot of stringing, so I just don't know if something is wrong with it because yeah, I never had a success with TPU printing before on my previous printer. So I went online and I actually do some research and some of the people are telling that you should be just adjusting to a longer retraction. So I adjusted my retracts from four to eight. And yeah, let's actually apply that setting and see what's actually going to be happening. If few moments later all right so here's going to be the second result as you can see that it is actually quite evenly bad as you can see we have so much stringing if you just wanted to kind of look at this side by side this is the first one second one made it a little bit better but it's just still evenly unusable so you know it's just quite bad and it seems that we're having a lot of flaws 
at this point, I really don't know what is the problem. You know what? Let's actually just order a new row of, of filament to see if the moisture is a problem because this CPU has been sitting on my bench for quite a while and I did actually dry it, but I just don't know if that's a problem. All right, so let's actually do that. All right, so this is the following week and we actually receive our brand new filament as you can see right here. We're getting the Polyflex 95A because I just searched that this is probably the more expensive one and supposed to be giving you better kind of even results. So that's why we're using it. All right, so we're just gonna be printing the same file and then let's go. All right, so you can see that we are still getting some stringing issue. It's actually much better, but still they are stringing. So we know that probably the main cause is not going to be the material, but must going to be our settings. So I actually went online and started researching and until I find this video that actually kind of explained it and kind of hit the spot. It's the temperature issue. The default setting of the Bamboo Lab is actually going to have 240 degrees when you're just for TPU in general, like the default setting. But instead, our filament actually suggests us to do 210 to 230. So it's over heat. And that's why you're kind of having a lot of like glue because it's just too hot. So I started by adjusting it to 210. And obviously, yeah, that didn't work as well because I have a lot of clock because it's just not hot enough. So I bump it up a little bit to another 10. And this time it's finally a bingo can see that we are actually getting a really nice detail print. We are still having some imperfection, but I'm really pretty happy with this. This is actually a proof that you can actually use Bamboo Labs just without much learning. You do have to tweak a little bit, but you can still get pretty good results all from it, especially with these harder to print materials because TPUs, it's just going to be harder than PLA or PLA whatsoever. So yeah, pretty happy with the result overall. All right, so what is going to be our conclusion today? So I do think that this video is able to allow us to prove that we are able to use the Bamboo Lab A1 Mini just basically without much experience and you can just start printing right away for the stuff you like instead of having to invest a lot of time into learning to do this and that. And because of so many people was actually using the Bamboo Lab platform, yeah, you can find the answer you need probably a lot more easy. And I think that they did actually did a pretty good job on the machine itself that there is not a lot of learning curve. As for the printing experience, currently I'm really happy with it. And I can see that I'll be using it a lot in my future videos because yeah, when you fly a PV, this is kind of like a life savior for most of the stuff that you need. All right, so I hope this video is actually helpful. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave the link down below and I will see you in the next one. Bye for now.